Welcome to the Getting Started video series for Slope3D. This video will cover two approaches for defining the geometry for a 3D stability analysis. There are fundamentally two approaches for creating geometry in CAD-like packages. The first is mesh-based, which uses triangulated meshes to define a surface or a volume. The second approach makes use of a non-uniform radial-based spline to generate a shape. A NURBS defines a shape using a mathematical equation, like a spline, that is parameterized to control the shape. Notice that this surface is much smoother than the mesh one shown previously. GeoStudio defines geometry using a NURBS-based geometry kernel because it is ideal for geotechnical structures like dams, tunnels, embankments, excavations. It's ideal simply because these anthropogenic objects contain a lot of planar surfaces and sharp edges. NURBS provides a simple way of creating geometry because shapes are easily created via sketching in 2D or 3D and by performing simple operations like extruding, sweeping, cutting, and merging. This makes NURBS ideal for geotechnical engineering applications where the geometry is well defined. Unlike many mesh-based geometries, NURBS geometry is clean and watertight, making it ideal for generating a finite element mesh inside the volume. Mesh-based geometry can also present many benefits. For starters, meshes are common in many engineering workflows. The output from airborne and ground-based LiDAR scans, for example, is often a mesh. These meshes capture the undulations of the natural ground surface and any other complex geology. Hence, meshes are used in products like Sequence LeapFrog. Finally, standard triangulated language or STL file format is used in a wide range of CAD, geology, and mining applications. In GeoStudio, and specifically for Slope3D, the geometry can be created using either NURBS or mesh-based approaches. In the case of NURBS, the geometry is constructed using the tools available within the software. Also important, the use of GeoStudio geometry means that we can integrate Slope3D with Seep3D because the software can generate a finite element mesh inside the solids. The mesh-based approach uses a 3D geometry created outside of GeoStudio. This could include an OBJ file or a dynamic connection with LeapFrog via Sequence Central Server. The latter approach allows us to harness the full capability of LeapFrog's purpose-built tooling for modeling the subsurface. In a mesh-based workflow, pour water pressures in Slope3D must be defined using piezometric surfaces because we cannot generate a finite element mesh within the geological model volumes. Let's now review the workflow in GeoStudio. In this GeoStudio file, we've already added a 2D geometry, followed by a seepage analysis, and then a classical 2D slope stability limit equilibrium analysis. If I click on Define Project, we see that on the Physics tab, we're modeling water transfer, and hence there's a water tab. It's a steady state analysis. Then, as I said, we've added a slope stability analysis using Morgenstern price, where the pore water pressures come from the parent analysis. And in this case, the parent is set to the seepage analysis. Now we can go and add a 3D geometry to this file. I'll click on the definition view go back to define project, click at the top node in the tree, and then add a 3D geometry. To this 3D geometry, I'm going to add our seep 3 d steady state analysis and rename it pit dewatering 3D. And then with that complete, I'll close this dialog box. As noted in the PowerPoint presentation, GeoStudio is by its very nature a NURBS-based geometry creation tool. And so we can 
sketch items, we can create construction planes, make bodies, convert background mesh, fit surfaces, sweep, extrude, cut, merge, imprint, and delete. Under the import options, you'll see that we can import bodies that are NURBS uh, file formats. We can import some meshes, 2D sections, profiles, and so on. So for this demonstration, we could, for example, pick a construction plane and then sketch in 2D and use this, this tooling right here to create our geometric objects, much like we do in a 2D analysis. Now for this demonstration, what I'll do is click on the Import Analysis option and choose our pit dewatering 2D analysis. When I hit OK, you'll notice over in the Geometry Explorer that we now have a pit dewatering item in the list. And if I zoom out and pan over, we realize that the 2D analysis was imported into the software and extruded automatically one meter in the Z direction. Okay, so if we were to run this analysis as is, we would effectively capture what we had in our 2D analysis. I'm gonna to go to the extrude and right click, edit this. And let's just imagine that we were exploring the effect of having a dewatering well, the, the well item shown at the toe here, every 100 meters into the page. And so we could simply extrude this in layers of 100 until we get the depth or the thickness that we require. Hit OK, and then we would be done. The key message here is that defining the geometry using a nerve space approach is fairly fast and quite uh, straightforward to do. Now with parametric geometry, I can then go and add a slope 3D analysis using the limit equilibrium method. And now I'm replicating the same type of tree structure that I have in 2D. Okay, I'm now going to define project again and click at the top of the tree, add another 3D geometry. But in this case, we're going to import that geometry directly from LeapFrog. I'll close this dialog box and while clicked on here, even without an analysis in the tree, we can go to the import geological model volumes. If I choose from a file, then the files to which I refer must be of the OBJ format that I mentioned earlier. And so just as an example, uh, we have a number of OBJs that I could bring directly in to GeoStudio. For demonstration purposes though, I'm going to go to File, Import, and choose from Central. I'll give it one second here, and then the Central project I am signed in to Central through my Sequent ID. Accordingly, I see all the servers that I have access to. I'm going to choose the Central server, Geotech, and then we give it another second while it connects. We see that uh, there's a number of different projects we have available. So I'll select New Fox Hills and we'll hit OK. We see down in the bottom right, that we have an indicator of how long it's taking or the, the process. And so uh, we'll notice it comes in and it's sitting at a rather curious uh, position in space. That is because GeoStudio uses Y up in Cartesian space while LeapFrog uses Z up. And so the first thing I'm gonna do here is uh, name my transformation template. I'll just call it geometry demo, and then I'll remap the axes. So the Z axis in LeapFrog maps to the positive Y axis, and then the positive Y axis in LeapFrog maps to the negative Z axis. And I'll just hit adjust the base point, and now we'll see the domain sitting in the right spot. 
and zooming in here and looking from the top down, we note that the negative z-axis is, is pointing up the screen, and so that is our northern direction in GeoStudio. With that done, I'll hit OK. We'll save that transformation template. And now, when we're done, we will see the full LeapFrog geological model in GeoStudio. Okay, I'll just rotate this and zoom in. And then over in the Explorer, we'll point out the fact that unlike when we were dealing with nerves-based geometry, where we had an item in the design history and then uh, objects under geometry like solids, uh, vertices, and surfaces, in this case, we only have the geological model volumes. Now, there are a lot of them, and when we click through here, you'll notice that they highlight on the geological model volumes in the display, uh, telling us which one of these geologies belongs to which volume. Now, with that done, I can go and add a 3D stability analysis and then follow the normal steps of defining our search method, our materials, uh, and then meshing and solving. So I'll cover those components in the next video. Thanks for watching.